has methodically, maniacally, and meticulously exacted the wrath of revenge on several of its opponents. But it's a different time. It's a different story now. It's not about the payback anymore. It's about the payoff. They're thinking about Pasadena, but Wisconsin is next. Sunny first Saturday in the month of November finds Wisconsin three hours away from Madison taking on number 10 Iowa Iowa ranked number 10 in the country Wisconsin three losses this year by a combined 11 points look at the action right now as it stands in the Big Ten Iowa 5 and Ohio State 4 and 0 the Buckeyes with a key contest today at home against Minnesota. As for Iowa, they face a lot of adversity today, playing without Fred Russell, the team's leading rusher, number 19 in the nation, rushing. But he will not be in uniform because of a hand injury. Hello, everybody. I'm Mark Jones, along with Bob Davey. Welcome to Iowa City. Bob, Kirk Ferentz, the head coach of Iowa, and Barry Alvarez, Wisconsin's head man, used to coach here together for five years. When you look at their teams and the way they play right now, it's as if they're coaching from the same manual handbook. Mark, these two teams are mirror images of each other, particularly on offense. Both of them have quarterbacks that can run and throw. Both have explosive tailbacks that run behind big offensive lines. For Wisconsin, Brooks Bollinger is the winningest quarterback in Wisconsin history. He has some great stats, but the most important one today, he's 3-0 versus Iowa. Anthony Davis, Wisconsin's tailback, is only 5'8", but he's quick and he hides behind those big offensive linemen. For Iowa, Brad Banks, their quarterback, he's playing as good, if not better, than any quarterback in the country right now. Fred Russell, Iowa's tailback, won't play today, but if you're a Hawkeye fan, don't panic. Jermell Lewis is talented. He had 109 yards last week rushing against Michigan. Well, the one thing Kirk Ferentz has done this year with his team is keep them very level-headed coming to each and every big contest that they have had now in his fourth season as head coach. As for Barry Alvarez, last year's team went 5-7. and seven. A win today for the Badgers, and they would become bowl eligible. They come into this contest after a pivotal win last week against Michigan State. Iowa has won the toss, and they, as is their custom, have decided to receive I believe that now makes it 37 of the last 38 games. Iowa will be on offense to start the football game. Ochoa and Jones back deep. That's C.J. Jones that watches it go through the back of the end zone. And they will start off in their own 20-yard line. Let's go downstairs to Holly Rowe. Guys, as you mentioned, Fred Russell will not play the running back for Iowa. He says he wants to play, but his coaches are holding him out because he does have a significant hand injury. He said he's now able to ball it into a fist. He did practice a couple of days this week, but as a precaution, they don't want him to be injured further. They'll save him until next week. Jermell Lewis, though, averaging 6.9 yards a carry, is a capable backup, as he proved with over 100 yards last week against Michigan. Yeah, he was a highly recruited player out of Bloomfield, Connecticut, a couple of years ago. Lewis, the starting tailback, good numbers last week against Michigan. First down and 10 from the 20-yard line for the Hawkeyes. Banks, Brad Banks doing well running the ball this year. Team's third leading rusher, got two on that play. Banks has thrown for 18 touchdowns this season against just four interceptions, completing a high percentage of his passes. Look at the best five backs and receivers, Lewis, Cervantes, Jones, Hinkle, and Dallas Clark, an All-American candidate at tight end. A lot of balance in that receiving core, Mark. Two receivers that have caught 30 balls, and also the tight end, Dallas Clark, over 20 catches this year. Second down and eight to go. Jones in motion. Here's the zone play they run, and it's Lewis. Drive down, and Lewis brought down at the 29-yard line by number 23, B.J. Tucker. It's a hold against the Hawkeyes. Take a look at that big offensive line for Iowa. Four seniors and one junior up front. Tall and extremely athletic, Bob. And I think they like the challenge 
of Fred Russell not being in the game. Even though that sounds strange, that's a challenge for them to step up for Jamel Lewis today. Going against this defensive front, Sprague, Hawthorne, Jefferson, Erasmus James, one of the leaders up front for the Badgers. I really like those two 300-pound tackles inside. Both sophomores, both excellent against the run. After the penalty against the Hawkeyes, they move the ball back to the 13-yard line. The second down and about 18 to go. The Hawkeyes this season have been very proficient scoring on their first drive of the ball game. They hand it off to Lewis. Lewis brought down at the 19-yard line by Jim Leonard. Let's take a look at the Badger linebackers. Williams, Corson, and Lamar Watkins. Young group, Bob. A little young, Mark, and also a little undersized. Secondary's been very good this year. Starks and Tucker on the corner. Leonard and Aiello, two of the team's leading tacklers. Amazing statistic. Both safeties are one and two, leading Wisconsin in tackling. Look for Iowa with the throw to football early in this game. Third down and ten. Banks threw that one away. Maurice Brown was in the vicinity, but Jonathan Welsh was applying a lot of pressure to number seven, Brad Banks, if there's a flag down on the play at the 20-yard line. Illegal forward pass on the offense. The quarterback was beyond the line. That's a five-yard penalty, loss of down, fourth down. So for one of the few times this season, Iowa offensively unable to move the ball on its first offensive series. Into punt is David Bradley. Number 28 back deep, it's Jim Leonard. Bradley averaging 39 yards per punt this season. This follows the script for Barry Alvarez because Wisconsin will have excellent field position provided they don't make any mistakes marked on this punt return. About a little pressure up the middle. Leonard calls for the fair catch and lets it bounce. And it hit a Badger player, but it took a fortunate Wisconsin bat bounce right back to him. A 43-yard punt. Ryan Simmons recovered the fumble. Mark, it takes a little bit of good fortune. Here you see the returner, Jim Leonard, signaling to get out of the way, but the ball bounces off the Wisconsin player. Fortunately, they came back and recovered. Big break right there for the Badgers early in this game. First down and 10 from Wisconsin's 42-yard line, looking at some good field position. Anthony Davis. And he stops up after a gain of about one yard by Jonathan Babineau. Brooks Bollinger is the starting quarterback for Wisconsin, 6'2", 204-pound senior, completing 58% of his passes, 11 touchdowns, just three interceptions on the season. Take a look now at the best buy backs and receivers, Anthony Davis, the team's leading runner, Bernstein, Orr, Charles, and Pachotti. Anthony Davis, 1,400 yards last year, only needs 33 today, Mark, to go over the 1,000-yard mark. They'll be milking him as they do once again, but they fake it to him. Bollinger keeps it, runs it out to the 46. Brought down by Kevin Worthy. All five seniors return, pardon me, starters return from a season ago up front for Wisconsin. The Johnsons, Benning, Clinksdale, and Jowers. Mark, not many centers are first-round draft choices, but Al Johnson, Wisconsin center, I believe is a first-round NFL draft pick. Howard Hodges had a couple of sacks last week, applying a lot of pressure in their victory over Michigan. Quick slant, incomplete. No flag on the play. Pass intended for Darren Charles, and now the Badgers will have to punt. Let's take a look at the linebackers for Iowa. Worthy, Barr, and Grant Steen. Fred Barr, the leading tackler on this football team for Iowa. 
Here's a look at the secondary. A secondary that statistically is not that impressive, but they have done a great job on the field where it counts. Fourth and six. R.J. Morris punting. A low spiraling line drive caught back to the 14 by Hinkle. And Hinkle is brought down immediately. A nice tackle on the play by the Badgers special teams. And B.J. Tucker after that 40-yard punt. We'll be right back after this. Welcome back, everyone, to Kinnick Stadium. I'm Mark Jones, along with Bob Davey and Holly Rowe. Zeroes on the scoreboard, and we talked about these teams being mirror images of each other, especially when it comes to their balance box. Mark, that is an incredible statistic right there, particularly right here, Iowa. 1,925 yards rushing and passing. Wisconsin, only one yard difference. I've never seen that kind of balance. First down and 10. Banks on the bootleg. Going to keep it himself. Banks out to the 22-yard line. Reese Davis, first Saturday in November. So much to be decided still. This is when we start driving for championships, Mark. Still eight undefeated teams out there, and already, astonishingly, one, I'm not going to say in trouble yet, but one is a little behind. Rutgers and Miami, Ryan Hart. His dad went to Florida State. He found Aaron Martin, who Ferris Pippen passed it in, and Son on top by a touchdown. Boy, Greg Ciano, the head coach of Rutgers, former assistant coach in Miami, exacting a little uh, payback on his old school. Second down and two. Jamel Lewis stopped up right near the line of scrimmage. Didn't get the first down. Tackled by number 12, Alex Lewis. Lewis back in action for the Badgers at linebacker. And there's a look at Fred Russell on the sidelines. The team's leading rusher, number 19 in the nation rushing. Third down and two. Mark, these third down situations. Iowa number one in the Big Ten in third down conversions. The reason, a quarterback that can run. The second thing, they're not in many third and long situations. And third, great balance amongst the receivers. A lot of weapons. Iowa a little confused offensively in their formation. And a flag down as a result. Now the one thing about Illegal Iowa... Illegal snap on the offense. The center lifted the ball. Five-yard penalty. It's still third down. One thing, Bob, we saw last week with the Hawkeyes in their running game especially, they were very patient, and it finally started to pay dividends in the second half of the ball game. Mark, and interesting, we go back to that graphic we had on balance. A lot of times, games in the ebb and flow, they're not balanced. Well, early in the football game last week, Iowa threw it, ran it. Late in the football game, exclusively ran it. So at the end of the game, they're balanced. Third down and seven for Brad Banks, the quarterback. Wisconsin bring a little pressure. Banks puts his hat down and takes on a tackler. That's good. And has the first down at the 29-yard line. Got a nice block on the play, too. Iowa with its first first down after 12-yard pickup. Mark Brad Banks, again, a predetermined quarterback run. The fullback Cervantes actually gets a hold right there, but you see the elusiveness and also the strength of Brad Banks. Right there, you see the hold. Cervantes, Iowa got away with one right there, but another third down conversion for the Hawkeyes using the quarterback's legs to convert. First down and 10. Jones in motion. Banks hits Lewis. And Lewis is brought down at the 34-yard line, picked up about five on the play by Broderick Williams, who was in on the coverage. Mark, when you have a new tailback in the game, we look at Jermel Lewis right there. There's no question he has a lot of ability. Kirk Ferentz told us early in the season he may be the most talented of the tailbacks. But a couple concerns, one, blocking, and second, protecting the football. He fumbled the football against Indiana and put one on the ground last week against Michigan. Second down and five. Jones in motion. They run the stretch zone. Lewis. Lewis tackled at the 40-yard line. Reese, uh, 
Clemson Tigers trying to put it back together. What's up? And Clemson going with Charlie Whitehurst against Duke at quarterback. And Whitehurst off to a terrific start. Completed all five passes on this drive. 57 yards. Kevin Youngblood for the touchdown there. And Tommy Bowden's team on top by a touchdown. 7 to nothing. Michigan State up by a field goal on Michigan. They are early in that game. Clemson's a talented football team, Mark. Great on offense. Michigan State playing for something today. A bit of pride, if nothing else. First down and 10. Banks on the bootleg and sacked. Back to the 25 by Jake Sprague. Sprague staying home and making a nice play. You see early in this football game the advantage both defenses have playing against their own offenses. Wisconsin's a big bootleg team. You see Jake Sprague, he sees enough of that in practice. He stays at home. And the impressive thing, he's enough of an athlete to get Brad Banks on the ground. So recognition of the bootleg, probably because they practice against their offense so much, the Wisconsin defense. Second down and 22 now. Kevin Castro, defensive coordinator for the Badgers on the sideline. Banks out of the shotgun. Poor snap. Banks makes a play out of it. Hinkle. Hinkle gets the first down for the Hawkeyes at the 43. Brad Banks kept his fours, kept his head, and they picked up 15 on the play. The athleticism of Brad Banks. First of all, he picks the snap up off the ground. But more importantly, he has the patience and the presence to stay alive, get rid of the football to Ed Hinkle, and stop Iowa from having the second negative play in a row. Gets them in a manageable third down and seven situation. There's Banks. Completes it. Short of the first down, though, to Clinton Solomon, the 6'4 freshman. Jim Leonard, the strong safety. The team's leading tackler making the stop on the play, and the Hawkeyes will have to punt. Iowa has lost five consecutive times to the Badgers after going undefeated against Wisconsin in the previous 18 contests. Bradley with the second punt of the afternoon. We'll try and drop this one inside the 20. Leonard made the fair catch. And there's a flag down at the 14-yard line. Leonard brought down to the 19 after that 35-yard punt. Well, Steve Payman's been a very busy official so far. Mark. Once again, the halo. the halo call, which is the toughest call to make for the officials in football. You see right here, number four, Scott Bowling coming down in the coverage, actually gets run into a little bit, but Mark, he was inside that halo right there. Well, even though the contact wasn't caused by him. Wisconsin deciding, electing to decline the penalty because Jim Leonard actually had more on the return than the penalty would have given him. And he placed the ball at about the 24-yard line. And we're going to take a timeout. Still zeros on the scoreboard when we come back to Kinnick Stadium. Stick around. ESPN's presentation of college football brought to you by Saab. Introducing the new Saab 95 sedan and sports wagon. And by Best Buy. For the latest technology, turn on the fun at Best Buy. The Iowa Hawkeyes riding a six-game winning streak into this game against the Wisconsin Badgers. Back at home this week, Iowa is, and ranked number 10 in the country. Zeroes on the scoreboard with five and a half minutes to go in the first quarter. First down and ten for the Badgers. Evans the lone back. Here's Bollinger on the bootleg, and it's incomplete. Intended for Darren Charles. Nice hit on the play by D.J. Johnson. 
Iowa's defense against the run, extremely stout, number two in the nation. Mark's statistics, though, can be misleading. You look at this rush defense here for Iowa, a couple things. Iowa's been ahead in football games. Teams have had to throw it on them. Plus, Iowa has 28 sacks, which that negative yardage, yardage has taken off of teams' rushing yardage. Look for Wisconsin not to be baited into throwing the football. Wisconsin's going to try to run this football on this Iowa defense. Just like they did there with Howard Hodges making the stop for the Iowa front. Let's go back to Reese in the studio. And Mark, you've talked often about how your paper boy's demeanor rises and falls with the success or failure of the Hurricanes against Rutgers. Here is Willis McGahee bursting into the open field. He's going to rip off 70 yards. You have to give the Scarlet Knights some credit. That defense rises up, holds Miami to a field goal after that big McGahee run, and Rutgers continues to hold the lead on the number one team in the land, Indiana and Northwestern, locked up at six. Well, Reese, I guess my paper boy is going to be a little upset. I'll get my Herald late tomorrow. On the scramble, Bollinger tucks it under and is tripped up at the 28-yard line by Fred Barr in pursuit. And it'll be fourth down now for the Badgers. Both the defenses, Mark playing extremely well early in this football game. Once again, it goes back to familiarization. Both offenses are carbon copies of one another. A lot of recognition, which gives the defense the advantage early in the game. R.J. Morris punting. Another low line drive spiral. Hinkle tackled immediately on the play by Tucker after that 47-yard boot. Good coverage once again by the Badgers special teams with 4.01 to play in the first quarter. We'll be right back. Welcome back, everyone, to Kinnick Stadium here in Iowa City, Iowa. Wisconsin against number 10. Iowa and I'm Mark Jones along with Bob Davey and Holly Rowe down in the field. And most of the season, Iowa has been the type of team, Bob, that has jumped on its opponents extremely early and kind of struggled to hold on at the end. Mark, they've had some penalties here early in this football game. Three penalties already that has affected their play calling because they've gotten into some uncharacteristically long yardage situations. First down and 10. Jamel Lewis. He's going to lose about a yard in the play. Jim Leonard knifed in there through the defense, through the uh, line, actually, to make the play. Now, College Football Saturday continues today on ESPN at 3.30 Eastern. Illinois travels to Happy Valley to take on number 21, Penn State. And Larry Johnson then in prime time down to Jacksonville, folks, for the annual cocktail party between number 5, Georgia, and number 22, Florida. This will be the first night game in the series since 1994. Second down and 12. Lewis in motion to the top of your screen. Underneath to Dallas Clark. And Clark is out to the 33-yard line. And what's up with Michigan and Michigan State? Bruce? Well, Mark, Michigan hasn't lost two in a row to Michigan State since the mid-60s. Still stinging from last year, down 3 nothing, Fourth and inches, and B.J. Askew powers his way into the end zone. And the Wolverines are up in the big house by the way tough as Michigan State's crowd has been on the Spartans at home with the booing that goes on in the stadium. The best thing might be that Michigan State's playing that game on the road in Ann Arbor. Chance to really uh, atone for a lot of their sins so far this year. Third down and two for Iowa. He has a man and dropped by C.J. Jones. Brad Banks throwing that one to his cousin, C.J. Jones, who dropped it. I think I think the plan for Iowa is to make Wisconsin safeties cover. Here you're going to see they get what they want. They have C.J. Jones on Ryan Aiello, but C.J. Jones just cannot make the catch. Mark Wisconsin at times a nine-man front. They are going to make, Iowa's going to make Wisconsin safeties cover. Here's the punt by Bradley. Leonard calling for the fair catch at the 28-yard line. Plenty of college football action coming your way on ESPN2 today. At 4 Eastern, it's an ACC battle. As number 20, Florida State looks to continue their dominance over the Demon Deacons. Then 7.30, Pittsburgh will try to upset the BCS hopes of number 3, Virginia Tech. The undefeated Hokies are led by running back Kevin Jones. 
and Lee Suggs. For more of our lineup of upcoming games, log on to ESPN.com keyword schedule. First down and 10 for the Badgers, still trying to get that running game on track. Last week ran for over 300 yards on the ground. Here's Davis. Get to the edge a little bit. Brought down to the 30-yard line. Davis came into this game needing 33 yards to reach 1,000. And Wisconsin, as a school, has turned out a litany, a procession of very prolific 1,000-yard rushers. Mark, if he goes over 1,000 yards, that will be 10 straight seasons that Wisconsin has had a 1,000-yard gainer. Second only to North Carolina, who I believe has 12, had 12 straight seasons back in the early 80s. Second down and seven. Bollinger going up top on the post. Incomplete, just missing. Jonathan Orr, the freshman. D.J. Johnson there on the coverage for the Hawkeyes. It'll Wisconsin loves this red shirt freshman, Jonathan Orr, the wide receiver. Here they get him matched up on D.J. Johnson. They go up the top. Just couldn't quite come up with the play. Excellent coverage right there by D.J. Johnson. Jonathan Orr has caught five consecutive touchdowns in five consecutive games. Nice little streak coming in this one. The team's leading receiver. Third and seven. Bollinger going to take off on the draw. He's near the first down. At the 37-yard line brought down by Kevin Worthy. So Brad Banks isn't the only quarterback that can run here in this game. Brooks Bollinger. Mark, you see the similarities once again. Wisconsin with the predetermined quarterback draw, using, using Anthony Davis as the lead blocker. Brooks Ballinger very close to the first down. In fact, he made the first down. That was really important because that was the third straight series right there that Wisconsin had relatively good field position, and they're able to convert and get their first first down of the game. Barry Alvarez says that his quarterback, Bollinger, is the best leader, quote-unquote, he has ever seen. The winningest quarterback in Wisconsin history, also more yards gained rushing than any other Wisconsin quarterback. First down and 10. Davis brought down behind the line of scrimmage, and Reese Davis, uh, no trickeration on that play. Well, a little trickeration here, though, Mark. You know, when you've lost 21 straight ACC games like Duke has, no reason to leave anything in the bag. Darrell Scott is going to find Chris Douglas, and Clemson was befuddled and perplexed. Tied at seven in the first quarter. UConn up by a couple of touchdowns on Coach Schnellenberger's team. They are in the first quarter as well. Mark. These offensive coaches are screwing up college football. <laughs> There's for certain things you should not be allowed to do. That play for Duke right there, that's one of those things they should just ban some of those things in college football. I mean, give the defensive coaches a chance. Uh, gimmicks and gimmicks. Second and 13 under pressure, and he's sacked by Roth. Matt Roth with a sack for the Hawkeyes. The Hawkeye defense continuing to lead the conference in sacks. Very uncharacteristic of Wisconsin. They have given up more sacks than any team in the Big Ten. And here you see Matt Roth come around on the twist stunt. He was a converted linebacker. He gets his fifth sack of the season. Iowa leads the Big Ten in sacks. Excellent coverage downfield. Brooks Bollinger wanted to go to the curl. It was open. Just didn't have enough time to get it off. Matt Roth, a tremendous player, really starting to come on, harnessing his intensity and becoming much more productive as a result. And that's the last play of the first period. Neither team able to put points on the board. Wisconsin trying to make it six straight over Iowa. We'll be right back. Thirty-seven degrees down in the field. It just got warmer, Bob, on Wisconsin's side of the field. Mark Jim Uber, Wisconsin's offensive line coach, in the Big Ten, 19 straight years, 11 years at Wisconsin. He's seen enough. <laughs> Wisconsin has given up their 36th sack of the season. Jim Uber, one of the best offensive line coaches in college football. Third and 20 and a flag down. They'll whistle this one dead. Prior to the snap, false start. Offense. Five yards it's still third down. Take a look at our gateway game track, some of the cogent points of the game so far. It was a first quarter in which the defense is dominated. Both teams with a couple of three and outs to start the game. 
Mark, and these are two excellent offensive football teams, but I go back to playing against similar style offenses in practice. Defense is recognition and repetitions, and they practice so much against each other that the defenses of right now have the advantage early in this football game. Hey, Bob, it's the first time this year that Kirk Ferentz's team has not scored in the first quarter. Amazing statistic right there, Mark. Third down and 25. Bollinger, incomplete intended for his tight end, number 82, Rob Tucker. The They'll great the thing, excuse me, Mark, the great thing that Iowa has done this season, they are a balanced football team, the total package. When one unit is struggling, another unit always seems to step up. Look right now for maybe a big special teams play to get this football team on track, or the defense coming up there. Morris with not one of his better efforts. Hinkle at the 45. Hinkle with a nice return down to the 47-yard line on Wisconsin side of midfield. A nine-yard return on that 34-yard punt. And, well, two teams in need of a win meet tomorrow on Sunday Night Football. Mark Brunell hopes to lead a balanced offensive attack as the Jags face the Giants. Michael Strahan and the Giants D look to disrupt the threesome of Brunell wide receiver Jimmy Smith and running back Fred Taylor. Sunday Night Football, 8.30 Eastern on ESPN, also available on ESPN Deportes. It all starts with NFL Primetime presented by Miller Lite at 7.30. First down and 10 for the Hawkeyes on Wisconsin's 48-yard line. Mark, we talked about statistics can be deceiving when we looked at Iowa's rush defense and pass defense earlier. Right. One statistic that is not deceiving is field position. And Iowa right now, for the first time today, really has excellent field position in Wisconsin territory starting this drive. Old Brown in motion. Lewis. Lewis brought down at the 45-yard line by Hawthorne. Let's go back to Reese. All right, Mark, elsewhere in the Big Ten, Michigan, Michigan State Wolverines have had all kind of trouble running the football. They're right down there on the doorstep, and John Navarre will stick it over and run it in from there. And the Wolverines are up 14-3, and a big day so far for the junior running back from Northwestern, Jason Wright. 54 yards, a couple of touchdowns. They're up on the Hoosiers. Now, Reese, that Michigan team only running for 22 total yards last week. They lost against Iowa. Second down is in mind, Mark. Wisconsin had 313 yards rushing on Michigan State last week. They're really struggling. There's Lewis out near the 40-yard line. Jamel Lewis getting the start today in place of Fred Russell. Folks, if you're just joining us, Fred Russell not playing the result of an injury suffered to his right hand last week against the Michigan Wolverines. There he is, the native of Romulus, Michigan, on the sidelines. And you have to think... Once again, what's going through Aaron Grieving's mind? The second tailback who left the program last week. He would have had the opportunity to start today. Third down and three. So Vances and Lewis. Here's a little option. Into the boundary. Lewis got an alley. And a first down at the 29-yard line. Jermel Lewis. But a nice block on the play by his fullback, Cervantes. A 13-yard gain. The great thing about Iowa, they are a zone-blocking team. Here they come with their basic zone up, uh, zone blocking, but they add the element of the fullback lead blocker and the quarterback coming down the line and pitch the football. So it's actually called the zone option. And you add the option phase to it, a great block right there by Cervantes out there on the corner, Scott Starks for Wisconsin. First down and 10 as a result. Here's Lewis. Spun off one tackler, makes it down near the 26-yard line, brought down by Ryan Aiello, the second leading tackler, and the quote-unquote robber position that he plays, Bob. Talk about that a little bit. Mark, it's an interesting concept. Wisconsin is an eight-man front. They involve the free safety Aiello a lot as the ninth man in the front, and it's a coverage we call a rubber, a robber coverage. Well, he lines up very tight to the line of scrimmage, reads off the tight end. You see him lined up right here, reading off the tight end. If the tight end blocks, he becomes the ninth man in the front. And you see him right there come up and make the tackle. Lewis running and brought down once again by Aiello. And let's go down to Holly. 
Guys, I was talking with tight end for Iowa Dallas Clark yesterday, and I said, what's the best part of this season? I thought the answer was obvious, winning. But he said how balanced their team is. He said every time we go out on the field, if the offense isn't playing well, the defense steps up or the special teams get on the board. He also said he loves many players on offense are stepping up. It takes a lot of pressure off them to have one guy be the only star on this team. Well, Dallas Clark having a productive season, too. Snore now in a tailback. Third down and three. Clark in motion. And it looks like Iowa is suffering from procedural problems right now. Timeout, Iowa. It's their first. Able to call a timeout. We're going to take a short timeout along with the hot guys and the badgers. Stick around. We'll be right back. Iowa Hawkeyes looking at third down and three. They're two of four on third down so far today. Uh, Mark Jones along with Bob Dayton and Holly Rowe down in the field. Neither team has scored so far. Mark, this is a little bit different. Iowa with their second fullback in the game as the tight end to the top of the field, number 35, Eric Jensen. Brown in motion. And it's Brown on the reception. Stopped immediately at the 18-yard line. He got a favorable spot from the official, much to the dismay of the Wisconsin coaching staff on the sideline. B.J. Tucker made the stop on the play. Devin Cosgrove a little bit hot about the spot. You're going to see Maurice Brown come across in motion, run the simple flat route against a three-deep corner. The ball's excellently delivered by Brad Banks. Good tackle right there by number 23, B.J. Tucker. The whistle did blow before that ball came out, and he did convert the first down right there. Down in motion again. Lewis hits the hole quickly and brought down to the 16-yard line. Tackled by Antaez Hawthorne. One of those two studs in the middle along with Jason Jefferson. One of the difficult things for Iowa, two big 300-pound tackles in here for Wisconsin. And you see right here the penetration by number 77, Antoj Hawthorne, a very highly recruited player, Mark, out of the state of New Jersey, starting for his second year, and he's only a sophomore. Very obvious with some great recruiting ties in New Jersey. Got a lot of great players out of that state. Second down and eight. Banks into the end zone. Out of bounds. But a tremendous effort by Brown, who was working on Chucky Cowens. Iowa gets what they want. They get straight man-to-man -man coverage. The, the defensive back playing inside technique, which means he has a difficult time stopping the corner route. The ball's excellently thrown, but Mark, he did not have control of that football prior to going out of bounds. Excellent throw right here for by Brad Banks. Did not have control of that football. Third down and long. Eight to go. Got to get to the seven-yard line for the first down. Pass a little bit low and incomplete intended for Hinkle. And it'll be fourth down. In comes the field goal unit. It is cating time <laughs> here in Kinnick Stadium, Mark. 17 for 17 on the season. He is one of these guys. He came up to me at practice yesterday and said, Coach, you tried to jinx me last week <laughs> in Michigan. I said, you know what? You are beyond jinxing. He's so we can go ahead and talk about anything we want, Mark. This guy right here is a machine. He's an unjinxable. Close your eyes and... Hey, Kading, his key phrase when he kicks the ball, he says to himself, control the situation. Nice and slow. And he knocks it through. That's his 21st consecutive field goal. That one coming from 32 yards out. Iowa with the lead when we come back. ESPN's presentation of college football brought to you by Gateway, a better way.
Nate Kading with a 32-yard field goal just a few moments ago to give the Hawkeyes a 3-0 lead. Kading's mom and dad, Larry and Terry, in attendance here today, telling me that they have not missed one of his games, Bob, since his freshman year when they played at Penn State, said they didn't want to make the 12-hour drive. And I'll tell you what, <laughs> we're going to have a bunch of NFL cities to go to over the next 10 years of this kid's career because he is a machine, Mark. Kading knocks this one deep into the end zone. Williams will take a knee. They'll start off on their own 20-yard line. College football Saturday continues today on ESPN. 3.30 Eastern, Illinois travels to Happy Valley to take on Penn State, number 21. And then it's number 22, Florida, against number 5, Georgia. At 7.45 Eastern time, 4.45 Pacific. That's today on ESPN. Florida players uh, talking a little bit of jump down there, uh, even though they're the lower-ranked team. They'll stir be, the pot up a little bit, Bob. a bunch of talking <laughs> in that stadium tonight. There's a bunch of talking going on right now down there at some of those tailgates. I promise you that. Bollinger on the play fake. Going up high to make a nice grab is Jonathan Orr. At 6-3, an imposing, tall, lanky target. He gets the first down for the Badgers, picking up 17. You quickly see why the Wisconsin coaches are so high on him. He gives an inside move, breaks back to the corner, and goes up and takes advantage of that six-foot-three frame. Excellent throw right there by Brooks Bollinger. Also, Mark, great protection. So that little pep talk Jim Huber gave him a little while ago paid off on that play for Wisconsin's offensive line. First down and 10. They give it to Davis, running between the tackles over the 40 to the 41-yard line. Reese Davis, what's up in the Big East with Miami? Well, Ryan Hart threw an interception. Sean Taylor picked it off of the cane, set him deep up in Rutgers territory, and Ken Dorsey trying to cash in, and he is just about picked off by Gary Brackett. Kane has to settle for a field goal. Look at that Scarlet Knight defense. Early in the second quarter, Rutgers clinging to the lead, and West Virginia running wild against Temple, 24-0. I don't mean to be sarcastic, Mark. Go ahead. Rutgers should probably take a picture of that scoreboard right now and put that in their press guide next year. They better take advantage of that situation now while they have That's it. how close we were, they can say. Anthony Davis picking up a couple yards out to the 42-yard line. It'll be third down and about four to go for the Badgers. Anthony Davis last year ran for 1,466 yards, setting a freshman rushing record, an NCAA freshman rushing record. Averaging a little over five per carry this year. A couple of teams that are almost carbon copies of each other doing battle. Wisconsin really likes the quarterback runs Mark out of this situation. Bollinger flagged down in the backfield. He completes the pass to midfield. Mark Darren on the Charles. Way up holding right there. Dan Bunning on Jared Kloss, the defensive tackle. From Iowa. Holding offense. Ten yard penalty from the previous spot. Replay third down. You're gonna see the hold right here. Klaus lined up on Benning. It's simple one-on-one -on -one, man to man pass protection, and no question that he grabs him from behind right there. And that really disappoints Barry Alvarez because Barry Alvarez comes into a football game with a plan. And one of those plans is no self-inflicted mistakes, self-inflicted penalties. Well, they're not the type of team that traditionally beats themselves. Third down and 14. Bollinger, wide open. Williams with the first down at Iowa's 38-yard line. Brandon Williams, second on the team in receptions. Out of the same high school as Scott Starks on defense, picks up 29. Mark, it all starts with the protection. You're going to see Iowa keep everybody in. Brooks Bollinger sprints out, and they're going to run a deep crossing route back here to the freshman, Brandon Williams, and they throw the football back across the field. But go back to the protection. Jim Huber's pep talk a little bit earlier, plus the maximum protection paid off, and Wisconsin really likes this true freshman receiver. Hand it off to Davis. Davis accelerating through the hole all the way down to the 32-yard line, brought down by Grant Steen. Wisconsin 
brought the zone play to the Big Ten. And here you're going to see Wisconsin's zone play with the fullback as the lead blocker. They get the ball deep to Anthony Davis, and he cuts back. Looks a lot like Fred Russell in Iowa's offense that we've seen the last several weeks, Mark. Last year, Davis had 10 100-plus yard rushing games. Second down and four. They give it to him again. A little workhorse still on his feet and picks up a first down at the 23-yard line of the Hawkeyes. So now the Badger offense really starting to catch fire. They come back now, Mark, and they run the lead draw iso. And they put the fullback on the linebacker, Fred Barr. They get the ball deep. And you're going to see Anthony Davis get the ball deep in the backfield and then cut back once he gets up into the hole. A lot of teams in college football now, the draw, a softer play, let the defensive lineman get up the field, set pass, and get the tailback to be able to cut the football back. Iowa bringing a blitz. They give it to Davis. Knocked out of bounds at the 22-yard line by Derek Pagel. The free safety came up and delivered the lick. Davis closing in on that 1,000-yard mark. And those offensive linemen, Mark, they take great pride in those 1,000-yard rushers. And you can see the difficulty you have when you have a tailback like Anthony Davis, who might be 5'8", with those big offensive linemen that Wisconsin has. He's tough to find back there. Mark Jones, along with Bob Davey and Holly Rowe here at Kinnick Stadium, Iowa, with a 3-0 lead. The Hawkeyes trying to stay undefeated in the Big Ten. Sanders Blitzen, but is picked up incomplete. There's a flag down in the secondary as Jonathan Orr tried to make the catch for the Badgers. I think we're going to get pass interference on number 42, Grant Steen, that collisioned Jonathan Orr. Darren Charles before the ball arrived. Let's go back to Reese in the studio. Mark, it appears the Paul Bunyan Trophy is well on its way back to A squared. Michigan, Michigan State, John Navarre's at seven of his first nine passes, including that beautifully strong ball to Ronald Bellamy and Wolverine are crushing the Spartans 21 to three. They're still early in the second quarter. Indiana Northwestern shootout. 13-12, Wildcats on top. All right, Reese, back here. First down and goal for Wisconsin from Iowa's nine-yard line after the penalty against Iowa. That's out of the offset eye. That's Davis, the deep back. They give it to him. Davis brought down after a gain of about one by Kevin Worthy. Remember, this is the number two rush defense in the country. The Iowa Hawkeyes. There's a look at the defensive coordinator, Norm Parker. A lot of similarities between these two teams, but one thing Wisconsin does different. They run the tailback counter. They gap block, pull the backside guard and the fullback. Iowa does not run the counter because there's too many moving parts, but Wisconsin does. A little bit difference in philosophy right there. Wisconsin down blocking, pulling the backside lineman, running the counter. Second and goal, ninth play of the drive. Bollinger. Incomplete. And he took a hit after he delivered it. Jared Foss with the pressure. It'll be third down and goal for Kirk Ferentz's defense. You're going to see two things here. Excellent coverage downfield inside the red zone. The field shrinks a little bit. Iowa matches up on the receivers. The second thing you're going to see is the experience of the quarterback throwing the football away because he was outside the tackle box. And you do not have, need to have an eligible receiver in the vicinity if you're outside the tackle box. Brooks Bollinger making great decisions this year. Third down and goal. Or in motion. Out of the backfield, wide open, Pettis, and he drops it. Jerome Pettis had nothing but him and five yards between the end zone and him. Mark, if you're the underdog and you play on the road, you have to make these kind of catches and these kind of plays. That was a sure touchdown right there for Wisconsin. And the reason Pettis is in the game is the third down back. He's an excellent pass receiver. Mike Allen, 8 of 13 on the season. Low snap. 
but they got it up and good. A 26-yard field goal, no flags on the play, and we'll be back, not at a three, right after this. A benevolent sky spattering down here on the field at Kin Kinnick Stadium as Iowa and Wisconsin are knotted at three apiece. A defensive battle so far. Uh, Bobby, surprised by that at all? Not really, Mark. I'm not surprised that it's a defensive battle. I'm not surprised that it's a close football game. Wisconsin comes in here having beaten Iowa five straight times. Wisconsin comes in here as a football team that's lost three Big Ten games by 11 points. Also, two of those teams were Penn State and Ohio State. So Wisconsin's a good football team. These two teams are very familiar with each other. I'm not at all surprised by this. Barry Alvarez and his counterpart, Kirk Ferentz, used to coach here at Iowa for five years on the same staff. It was interesting talking to Barry. Iowa was such a good special teams football team. He thought it was very important just to break even with Iowa's special teams. They split the kick. Field here at 25. Oh, fumbled out of bounds up at the 32. Reese Davis, what's up with the State University of New Jersey there? Well, Mark, if Bob wanted him to get a picture of the scoreboard, I hope they got it quickly. It's a third down play, bad snap to young quarterback, Ryan Hart. Clarence Pittman heads up play to turn it into a safety rather than a touchdown. So Ken Dorsey's going to take advantage, right? No! What an interception by Brandon Hall, the senior. Scarlet Knight defense hanging tough. It's an 8-7 game. Maybe they can uh, videotape the scoreboard. <laughs> First and ten for Brad Banks. When I was a coach, I never provided bulletin board information. Maybe this is a new side right here. But <laughs> the frustration now that I've never been on. <laughs> Here's Banks. Overthrowing Mo Brown. And Brown had a lot of room ahead of him if he makes that catch. Mark, we talked about Wisconsin playing the robber coverage with the safeties down deep, stopping the run. Right there, Iowa comes back and tries to take advantage of that with the play action pass on first down. They had it wide open. Just did not complete the ball. Brad Banks pulling the trigger of the offense. Maybe the best quarterback in the country that nobody knows about, but his numbers beginning to speak volumes. Here's the play fake. And he lets his legs do the talking here, running out of bounds at the 30-yard line. I talked about his numbers. And you know what, folks? You have to really look at him in terms of Heisman consideration because his numbers stack up favorably against some of the other people that they're talking about for the award. Mark, can you talk about what he's done starting for the first time as a senior? He's had an incredible season. If he was a junior, he would be a guy next year that would be on the Heisman list. I just think it's so difficult to come out of nowhere as a senior when no one's talking about you going into the season. But he has played extremely well. Once again, the co-offensive player of the week in the Big Ten Conference, sharing the award with Bollinger. This time, he hits his target Brown just over midfield at the 47 for the first down. He's brought down by Jim Leonard. A 24-yard gain and a first down for the Hawkeyes. Big play capability. You're going to see Maurice Brown lined up in the snot slot, just comes down the field, and he's going to beat the underneath coverage right here for a big, big first down. But he finds that soft spot in the zone. The linebacker doesn't get quite as, enough, as much depth. Maurice Brown averaging about 21 yards a catch for this Iowa football team. First down and 10. It's to Clark. And Clark makes the grab up near the 40-yard line. It'll be second down and about uh, four to go. One of the difficult matchups for Iowa is their safety, Ryan Aiello, on the tight end. We mentioned that they're a robber coverage team. They're going to get that safety locked up on the tight end. Difficult matchup for Wisconsin. Ryan Aiello and Jim Leonard. Two leading tacklers for the Badger defense. Second down and three. Well, if you
if you're just joining us, we've got 4.23 to go here in the first half. Iowa and Wisconsin tied at three apiece here from Kinnick Stadium in Iowa City, Iowa. Iowa trying to stay unbeaten in conference play. I'm Mark Jones along with Bob Davey and Holly Rowe. Third down and about three to go now for Iowa. Another third down and three situation. Extremely tough on Wisconsin's defense right now with all the weapons and all the different scheme that Iowa has. Cervantes and Lewis lining up out of the eye. Brown in motion. Banks has Brown and just missed him for the second time today. He had gotten in behind Scott Starks on the post. Mark, Wisconsin gets some pressure right here on Brad Banks, but in all honesty, this ball should have been completed. You're going to see right here again, Ryan Aiello reading and robbing off the tight end. They throw the post route in behind him. And the Hawkeye special teams knocks it out of the end zone, and they're going to down it. And now they're going to say it's a touchback on the 40-yard punt. Close but not quite for Kurt Ferentz's special teams unit, who this year has done a spectacular job, but not quite getting it on this one. We'll be back. Still tied at three with 3.36 to go here in the first half at Kinnick Stadium, Iowa City, Iowa. Wisconsin, first down and 10 from their own 20-yard line. Wisconsin was starting to get its running game going during the last offensive series. They give it to Davis, who stopped immediately by Derek Pagel. Let's take one more look at that last punt. Mark, a lot of people have a misconception about this. Just because Bob Sanders' feet are in the end zone, it is not an automatic touchdown. It all comes down to he touch the ball before it crosses the plane of the goal line. In this case, it has nothing to do with him being in the end zone. It's that the ball crossed the plane. That rule is different in college football than the NFL. In the NFL, if the, if the feet are in the end zone, it's a touchback. Second down and nine for Bollinger. Goes up top to Orr, and it's broken up nicely by D.J. Johnson. Let's go back to Reese with an ACC update. All right, Mark, and the Navy's going to start getting a little restless around Clemson, South Carolina, after what's going on at Wallace Wade Stadium, too. Adam Smith finding some Terry Landrum for the touchdown, and the Devils on top by a touch, getting pretty deep in the first half. I think turning around a little bit down at Duke. Duke has been competitive each and every week. The last week against Maryland, they didn't play very well, but up until then, they've played well every week. Third down and nine for Wisconsin. Bollinger to pass. Under heat and sacked by the conference's leading sack exchange, led by Jared Klaus. Hodges also in on the stop. Iowa leads the Big Ten in pressure. You're going to see Jared Klaus right here. A great effort sack. He just stayed with it, stayed with it, and comes in and sacks Bollinger. Actually just gets that arm out there enough to knock him off balance. Fourth and 14. Hinkle standing on his own 45. Here's the punt. A low line drive. Hinkle fielded it on the run, returns it to the 46 yard line after that 35 yard punt. You know, there's no more great college football action this afternoon on ABC. Key matchup in the Big Ten Minnesota against Ohio State. Then in the Big 12, Colorado with the nation's leading rusher, Chris Brown, taking on number two, Oklahoma. Georgia Tech, NC State, and Arizona State against Washington State. And Ohio State's remaining schedule looks like this today at home against Minnesota. Then perhaps a tricky one on the road at Purdue, followed by Illinois, then at home against Michigan. The great thing, they control their own destiny. Mark, and if they win out, obviously they may be in the Fiesta Bowl. First and 10 for Banks on the quarterback draw, called play. Brad Banks serving up some fries with that shake on the Wisconsin defense. First and 10. First and 10, Kenny O'Keefe, the offensive coordinator, comes with the predetermined quarterback draw. And you're going to see the athleticism of Brad Banks. Mark, 
Very few times this entire season I, have I seen the first defender get Brad Banks on the ground. He has a unique ability to make you miss. Deceivingly quick. First and ten, flag down on the play. Banks, incomplete, intended for Brown. Jim Leonard tipped that one away. The flag down on the near side of the field. It's against the Hawkeyes. Hey, Reese, what's up on the Nivea for Men halftime report? Well, Mark Rutgers is threatening to downgrade the Hurricanes to a tropical storm. We'll get you up to date on the latest of the Scarlet Knights and the Hurricanes. Take you around the Big Ten. A couple of shootouts going on in Indiana and Northwestern and one big-time whipping going on in the Big House. And we'll take you down to the cocktail party of the game day, guys. Getting ready for Florida and Georgia tonight. It's all coming up on the Nivea for Men halftime report. All right, Reese. And they can move the ball back to the 38-yard line. With under two minutes to go now in the first half. Kirk Ferentz cannot be happy. Six penalties on Iowa so far in this football game. And amazingly, Mark, he told us, great, great week of practice and preparation this week. The bottom line, you don't ever know until you kick that thing off on Saturday. First and 15. Thanks for Hinkle. And great coverage that time by Starks. With him stride for stride. And using that sideline like an extra defender. Scott Stark started last year for Wisconsin as a freshman corner. They have extremely high expectations for him. And you see right here, great confidence right here, looking back to the football the whole way down the field. Ed Hinkle never got Scott Starks out of his comfort zone, never made him panic. Second down and 15. Banks completes it. Brown down to the 19-yard line. Hits his favorite target. He was working on Chucky Cowens. Brown and Jones came into the game as the team's leading receiver. At 30 apiece, they pick up 18. You're going to see right here, Iowa clear and bring C.J. Jones back underneath. A zone beater right there, a little outside curly Q route. Excellent plan by Ken O'Keefe. First and 10, Banks with plenty of time underneath incomplete. And a flag down at the 24-yard line on the far side of the field. And we talk about the penalties incurred by the Hawkeyes today, and there's another one, a hold. In stark contrast, Wisconsin, as we mentioned, not the type of team that's going to beat themselves in the last couple of games. They've had a very, very low number of penalties. Offense. Ten yard penalty from the previous spot. Replay, first down. Mark, that's also an amazing statistic. Iowa, one of the heaviest penalized teams in the Big Ten. They're eight and one. There's not always a correlation between a penalized team and a team not being successful. It's more when they happen and what kind of penalties they are. That right there was a huge penalty because it was holding on first and 10. Time winding down in the first half, 123 to go. Banks out of the shotgun. Goes through his progression. Complete. At the 22-yard line to Ed Hinkle. Kept working to get open. And Banks rewarded him with the pass. In the market at the 21. We have a timeout on the field. We'll be right back. How many penalties? 3-3 three, three with 108 to play here in the first half. I'm Mark Jones along with Bob Davey, Holly Rowe down in the field. Iowa with the ball looking at second down and 11. Iowa limits to just three points so far. And this, keep in mind, is the eighth leading team scoring-wise in the nation. About 38 points per. Brown in the slot. Hinkle also to the bottom of your screen. Into the end zone, wide open. Touchdown. A busted coverage, and Brown made him pay. Brown 
with his seventh touchdown catch this season. And I mean, there was nobody within the 319 area code close to him. Tough to go on the road and have those kind of mistakes. It's going to be pretty obvious right here that there's a major breakdown in this coverage. It looks to me like Wisconsin is trying to play some kind of a bracket three-on-two coverage reading the routes of Iowa. And they completely turn Maurice Brown loose for the touchdown. And Mark, if you're going to turn someone loose, don't turn Maurice Brown, their leading wide receiver, loose. But it appeared to me that Wisconsin playing some kind of a bracket three-on-two man-to-man combination coverage a total breakdown right there for Wisconsin Banks with his 19th touchdown pass of the season so just four interceptions and Maurice Brown I remember him a couple of weeks ago telling me that the biggest difference between this year and last year with him is he set his goals a little bit higher has been much more demanding of himself and was looking towards getting and earning all-conference honors. 10-3 Hawkeyes. And Wisconsin will start off on its own 20. Let's go to Reese. All right, Mark, in the Big 12, Texas A&M and Oklahoma State poked on their home field. Long way to go. Tatum Bell can take care of that. Nice cut against the grain and exploding in. Nobody home in the middle. Cowboys tying this thing up at 7. Texas A&M reeling after giving up that big lead against Nebraska last week, guys. Bob, those uh, black shirts struggling a little bit defensively. Stillwater, a tough place to rebound, too. Particularly Oklahoma State opened date last week after the big win against Nebraska two weeks ago. It's like that I mean, meant the wrecking crew. <laughs> Not black shirts. This is Bollinger drilled by Derek Pagel. He put his hat right on his number five. This is a big play in college football right now, the decide play where the quarterback reads the defensive end. If he closes, the quarterback keeps it. But you're going to see the speed right here of Kevin Worthy tracking Brooks Bollinger down. And a big lick right there on the sidelines by Derek Pagel, number 25, the free safety. But, Mark, that play is the zone play to the back but the quarterback does not predetermine if he's going to give the ball to the back or not until he reads the defensive end. That time, Brooks Bollinger pulled the football, but Derek Pagel and Kevin Worthy tracked him down. Well, folks, don't forget that College Football Saturday continues today on ESPN2 for Eastern. Adrian McPherson gets the start of quarterback for number 20, Florida State. As they take on Wake Forest, a lot of controversy down there this week in Tallahassee. Then Pittsburgh takes on number three, Virginia Tech, with their great running game led by Lee Suggs and Kevin Jones. 7.30 Eastern time, that's on ESPN2. And the trainer now taking a look at uh, Brooks Bollinger. I mean, he got hit hard by Derek Pagel. One of the disadvantages of having a mobile quarterback, you saw his helmet snap back right there with the hit by Derek Pegel. But a disadvantage of a quarterback who runs is he is going to take these kind of shots. And wow, that rattled that headgear right there. Fortunate that Brooks Bollinger was not injured. Mark, if I was Wisconsin right here with Iowa only one time out and getting the ball in the second half, I'd get out of this half before anything else bad happens. Uh, Jim Sorge now in the ball game. Sorge threw for over 1,000 yards last year in filling in for Bollinger. Completes the pass that time to Darren Charles. There you see a little uh, testimony to his skills. Antoine Allen defending on the play. As you mentioned, Mark, Sorge played last year when Brooks Bollinger had the spleen injury. He's a big, tall guy, but runs surprisingly well. They say he's actually faster in the 40-yard dash than Brooks Bollinger. So he's a talented player. Not that much drop-off, if at all. Third down and one. Sergi hands it off. Davis broke a tackle and may have gotten the first down across the 30-yard line. The little guy has a lot of strength in those legs, very thick through his thighs and through his legs. And you see the size differential right there between <laughs> Anthony Davis and those offensive linemen. It's amazing. 
but Mark, you're right. He is strong down here where it really matters. Got a lot of junk in the trunk, as they say, Pat. <laughs> First and ten. Flag down. Georgie's going to take off. Heads for the sidelines in the first down marker at the 41-yard line. Got a nice block from Darren Charles on the play. Mark, what that 40 time looks like to you right there? Well, if you had to put I that clock like on Sorge. Four seven. I I pretty don't quick. No, now you're being generous <laughs> there now. Huh? I give a four seven, especially that with was four nine one. five at the best right there. <laughs> right, he's running into the wind. <laughs> You're going to see Kevin Worthy right here. A great hit by Darren Charles. You know what that is? That's payback. <laughs> That's payback. You take Brooks Bollinger out of the game, we're going to come back and get you. Darren Charles, six foot six. Mark, he was a basketball player in high school. Long I didn't know you basketball players had that kind of contact and explosiveness in you. Let's stick your head in there a little bit. <laughs> of course, Worthy didn't see him coming, but <laughs> better that way when you're a receiver blocking. First and 15. Davis cuts it back between the tackles, brought down to the 27-yard line by Colin Cole. An interesting first half of play, which saw both teams tied at three for most of the half until that late touchdown by Mo Brown on the busted coverage. 10-3 at halftime. Let's go back to Reese in the studio. Mark, thank you. Mark mentioned that busted coverage, and it did provide the touchdown for Iowa in the first half up 10-3. Glad to have you with us on the Nivea for Men halftime report. And Trev, it seemed like throughout much of the first half that you, you give a lot of credit to Wisconsin's defense, but Iowa seemed to be this close to making a play. Yeah, time after time. I think they missed Fred Russell time after time. You know, the wide receiver, the ball just, and that's what Iowa's done all year. They've made those kind of plays. But defensively, I think Iowa's taken another step. Wisconsin offense, they can run the ball. Iowa stopping the run, getting some pressure. Now in the second half, Kim Jim Sorge throw the football against Iowa's defense. And we mentioned being this close. You know what makes you not quite make those plays? Good defense. Absolutely. And Wisconsin's playing it in the first yep. half. And we continue on in the Nivea for Men Halftime Report. Willis McGahee's running wild, and it's not having the effect you might think against Rutgers. And hunker down, you hairy dog. We'll go to the cocktail party. We are dreamers. To ensure justice for everyone. Improved health care for all Iowans. That my family receives the same great education I did. But we are also Iowans. For over 150 years, we've been making Iowa a better place. One dream at a time. Back on the Nivea for Men halftime report. Iowa up on Wisconsin 10-3 at the break. Hawkeyes getting a touchdown from Banks to Brown. High-powered offense has been slowed down by Wisconsin. Yep. That mark, I think, is really critical for Wisconsin. Iowa, the beneficiaries of a busted coverage in the secondary by the Badgers, resulting in a score by Mo Brown. They're going to return this one out of the end zone. Williams up the sideline, knocked out of bounds at the 30-yard line. Nice return by Wisconsin. Let's take a look at our gateway game track. Mark, really tough to win on the road when you make mistakes. Here, Wisconsin's tailback, their third down back, Pettis, drops a swing that would have been a touchdown. And they have a broken coverage right here. They turn Iowa's leading receiver, Mo Brown, loose for a touchdown. Two big mistakes by Wisconsin in the first half. And that's Jim Sorge in a quarterback, 17 of 30 on the season coming in. For 290 yards passing, here's Davis bouncing it outside, closing in on the 1,000-yard rushing mark for the season. Let's, let's go downstairs to Holly Rowe. Gentlemen, Wisconsin quarterback Brooks Bollinger has not come out of the locker room. The training staff has told me that he will not return to play for the second half, although Barry Alvarez thought he might possibly. I went in and took a look. They have taken away his shoulder pads. They put the jersey back on him, so when he comes out, it does not look like he will be ready to go. Conflicting reports on the sideline down here, guys. We'll keep our eye on it for you. All right, Bollinger, not only the unquestioned leader of the offense, but the entire team. That's how important he is to Wisconsin. And he's played great against Iowa, Mark. Threw for 292 yards, 262 yards, and two other meetings. 
Davis again running the ball, brought down just over the 35. Davis has now gone over 1,000 yards for the second consecutive season. And that is the 10th straight season that Wisconsin's had a 1,000-yard rusher. And that's a credit to their coaching staff and also the philosophy of Barry Alvarez, run the football first. And you see them being patient, but Mark, obviously they're in a third down passing situation right now at third and five. Got to get to the 40-yard line or just beyond for the first down. The line up out of the eye. Sorge completes it for the first down, Jonathan Orr. At the 46-yard line, he was working on Antoine Allen. We talked about the prolific runners that have come through the gates at Camp Randall. And a look at the other schools with 1,000-yard rushers, consecutive seasons. And you think about number 28, Anthony Davis from Wisconsin. There was another number 28, 28 Anthony Davis, that played for USC. So it's ironic, the similarities right there. And now, Bob... Dwayne Smith is in the ball game. He had a career-high 110 yards rushing last week in the victory against Michigan State. Sorge steps up. Incomplete. Intended for Jonathan Orr. D.J. Johnson was there on the coverage. Let's go downstairs to Holly for more on Anthony Davis. Guys, Anthony Davis doesn't always just get the help up front from the offensive lineman when he's on the field, but off the field, they like to keep him updated on his stats. Every time they come over to the sideline after they've had an offensive series, the offensive linemen have been asking the last two games, did he get it? Did he get it? It's just important to them that he goes over a thousand yards rushing for the season as it is to him. That yeah, really is uh, quite a team accomplishment. It reflects well on the guys up front. Second down and ten. There's a look at Dwayne Smith getting the carry. Smith, a true freshman, actually was the first freshman, true freshman to run over 100 yards in a game since Ron Dane did it in 96. And how about this, Mark? Number one in his graduating class academically and comes into Wisconsin and has performed the way he's played as a true freshman. And the coaches marvel at how sharp he is and how he's picked up the offense. That's no coincidence because he was a great student in high school. And that certainly helps. Third and five. Sorge with time again. Almost intercepted by Sanders. Sanders leaping high but couldn't come up with it. And it'll be fourth down. They'll punt. A little bit different. You see Wisconsin stays in their regular personnel meaning the tight end, the receivers, and the two running backs. Sorge just overthrows that ball, but maybe a good decision because the, the curl was, was covered. Morris with his fifth punt. Hinkle calls for the fair catch. And a flag down that's going to be another halo violation, the second time we've seen that today on a 32-yard punt. B.J. Tucker getting a little bit too close for the Badgers. Mark, the halo is just so difficult to call. It puts so much burden on these officials. Here you see B.J. Tucker, Antoine Allen blocking him, similar to the situation we had earlier. You know, probably he is within that two-yard halo, but does it really matter? I mean, it just puts too much pressure on these officials trying to make that call. It puts too much pressure on these punt coverage units running down the field and trying to stop on a dime. I'm not so sure you don't get more injuries because the defensive players put themselves in vulnerable positions trying to stop. You didn't have a remedy for that on your uh, football 101 on your special I'll tell you what, you may have. I'm I read it. I read it. <laughs> First down and 10 for Iowa. First possession of the second half. Banks going to Clark. Dallas Clark finds a seam down in the middle of the field to the 31-yard line. He got in behind Ryan Aiello. We talked about Iowa making Wisconsin secondary or their safeties cover. Here you're going to see number seven, Ryan Aiello playing the robber, and Dallas Clark is going to run right by him. So Wisconsin up there with those safeties tight to the line of scrimmage. Dallas Clark, a little inside move, just runs by Ryan Aiello. Anytime your safeties are the leading tackers on your team, Mark, 
that's good, but it also can be bad because they're going to throw the football over top of you. Banks going back to pass again once more down the middle of the field, complete to C.J. Jones. First down, Hawkeyes at the 12-yard line. A 21-yard pickup. Now they come back, and they're going to make Jim Leonard the strong safety cover. You're going to see him right here. Too much grass between he and the receiver, Maurice Brown, and the ball thrown in there. Excuse me, that's C.J. Jones. But, Mark, great plan. Make Wisconsin safeties cover the pass. In two plays, they will go all the way down to the 12-yard line, 54 yards. Brown in motion. They run the zone inside. Jermell Lewis down at the nine-yard line. Reese, what's up in the Big 12? a &M making a bit of a rally. Dustin Long leading his team against Oklahoma State. I want you to keep your eye on number 44, Greg Porter, the senior from Keller, Texas, with the soft hand, or the soft hand. He only needed one of them for that catch. 21-14, Polk still on top, and Maryland struggling a little bit early with North Carolina. The Tar Heels up by a Ball inside the 10-yard line, second down and eight for Brad Banks, a quarterback, the number three-rated passer nationally in efficiency. Mark, you can see that safety up there so tight to the line of scrimmage again. Banks going to take off. Out of bounds at the three-yard line. Third down and about two to go. He wanted to go back again to Dallas Clark that time. Ryan Allo, Ryan Allo, the safety, good coverage. But Brad Banks takes off and runs. The hidden element that Iowa has in this offense. Brad Banks has thrown 19 touchdown passes this season. One of them today to Brown. Third down and two. Brown is split wide. Banks sacked, brought down at the 14-yard line by Alex Lewis. And a huge play by the Badger defense. It'll be fourth down. Iowa, Iowa wanted to go to Maurice Brown. And you're going to see Maurice Brown back in motion, working back to the corner right there. But Scott Starks, Wisconsin's best corner, locks up man-to-man -man on him. Good job. And then excellent pressure, Alex Lewis getting the sack and look who's out there. Mr. Automatic, Nate Caden. This one coming from 30 yards out. Don't even think about it. Nate Kading continues to rewrite the record books at Iowa with respect to field goals. Knocks it through. The Hawkeyes lead by 10. Suzuki. And with 10.05 to go in the third quarter, courtesy of a 30-yard Nate Kading field goal a few moments ago. Doesn't take much to get him fired up usually, but he said that last week at Michigan, some of their fans and their place kickers were talking a bunch of junk to him before the game, and uh, it's not like he needed any motivation, Bob, coming into it. Yeah, don't talk to him. <laughs> but I'll tell you what, Mark, you remember when you played hoops, you told me how you were the big-time college basketball well, player. Well, I got the tape to prove it, yeah. And you were in that zone. Uh -huh. This guy is in the zone. He has that kind of confidence. He can make one from anywhere on the field, kind of like you had and still have from beyond that arc. Uh, we were not, we're not going to mention that horse game we played, though, right? Well, you just did. <laughs> I'm glad Gating two yards deep to Williams. Williams takes it out to the 21-yard line. Well, here at Kinnick Stadium here in Iowa City, Iowa, the Hawkeyes taking on the Badgers trying to snap a five-game losing streak against their border rivals. I'm Mark Jones along with Bob Davey and Holly Rowe down in the field. If you're just joining us, there's a look at Fred Russell, the team's leading rusher, not in action today. The result of a right-hand injury suffered last week against Michigan. That is Brooks Bollinger, the starting quarterback for Wisconsin, now on the sidelines after he took a hit late in the first half to the head. First down and 10. Wisconsin has not been able to rush the ball today very successfully. That is another storyline. Jonathan Babineau making the stop on Anthony Davis, who, by the way, has gone over 1,000 yards this season today. Iowa's defense, Mark, 
really a great job of playing the same things over and over. Very simple on defense, but there's a great saying. By being simple scheme-wise, you allow players to play smart because they don't have to worry a lot about where to line up, a lot of different assignments. They play smart because they're in the same position every time. And they can play fast, too. Second and ten, flag down. Jim Sorgi is in the game at quarterback for the Badgers. Prior to the snap, false start on the offense to simulate the start of a play. Five-yard penalty, it's still second down. Sorgi threw for 1,096 yards last year. Nine touchdown passes, and folks, we'd like to take this time to give a special thank you to the airmen assigned to the United States Air Forces in Europe watching this telecast on the American Forces Network. We'd also like to salute the Department of Defense civilian employees providing support to our military members and their families at Aviano Air Base in Italy. Second down and 15. Sorgi. Incomplete and broken up by Bob Sanders. Brandon Williams, the intended receiver on the play. Wisconsin goes to the freshman receiver, and you see Bob Sanders, who's only about five foot eight, go up and make a play and strip that football out of there. Going back to Norm Parker, the defensive coordinator, he said Bob Sanders, the most physical football player, most explosive football player he's coached in 35 years of coaching. And Norm Parker's been around some good football players. Yeah, the hardest hitter he's ever seen. Third and 15. Sorgi tried to make a move, but tackled at the 18 by Fred Barr, the leading tackler on the Hawkeye defense. It'll be fourth down Badgers. Once again, Iowa very patient on defense. Not a team that blitzes you, not a team that gives you a great amount of pressure, but a good four-man rush team, a good zone coverage team, and they force Sorge to run with the football on third and long. Morris with his sixth punt of the afternoon. Hinkle has a shot at a return. And Hinkle is brought down at the 45-yard line. A 35-yard punt, one yard on the return. We're going to take a short break, and when we come back, Brad Banks had the offense in high gear on the first drive of the half. We'll see what he does when we come back. ESPN's presentation of college football brought to you by the exciting lineup of Suzuki products all proud presenting sponsors of the Heisman Trophy well from the pedestrian mall down on South Dubuque all the way to Melrose here at the corner of Stadium Drive all points in between everybody excited about this football team the Iowa Hawkeyes first down in 10 with just under eight minutes to go here in the third quarter. C.J. Jones in motion. Brad Banks has made his last five in a row. But that one incomplete. Let's go back to Reese in the studio. Reese, the Rutgers team, the story today. They are so far. This is a touchdown Miami scored right before the half. Willis McGahee going in. 17-14. They're about to start the second half. If you want to watch the second half, you can log on to ESPN.com. That broadband connection would help. It is being webcast on ESPN.com. So you can keep an eye on our game. Watch Miami and Rutgers the second half. They're about to start the second half on the banks of the rare camp. Second down and 10 for Brad Banks and the Hawkeyes. Trying to improve to 6-0 in Big Ten action. Banks has a man open at the 42. Brown. Hand walks all the way down to the 25. That is just a demonstration of the explosiveness of that Iowa Hawkeye offense. Brad Banks completing 60% of his passes. You see Iowa maximum protection. Tight end in, fullback blocking. They sprint him a little bit. And Maurice Brown just goes down and works one-on-one -on, -one on number four, Chucky Cohens. Excellent protection. Brad Banks 
60% of his passes for completions this year. Another big play for Iowa. They've come out here in the second half, Mark, and exploded, particularly throwing the football. Uh, that one going for 29 yards. On the out and up pattern going into the end zone and overthrown intended for Clinton Solomon, the tall, lanky freshman out of Texas. Mark, we go back to that last drive Iowa had. A great point is that the two leading tacklers for Wisconsin are their safeties, but they're going to make safeties cover. Here you see Dallas Clark on the free safety, Ryan Aiello. Now you see C.J. Jones on the strong safety, Jim Leonard. Good plan. Iowa right now only 59 yards rushing. Fred Russell not in the game, but Brad Banks in the passing game have taken over control of this football game. Second and 10 to draw to Jamel Lewis, who's filling in for Russell. Got a couple down at the 23-yard line. And as well as uh, statistically Brad Banks has played, Bob, you get the feeling that it's a game of near misses for him. A couple of completions here or there that he missed by a couple of inches. And this game, maybe they've got two more touchdowns on the board. No question, Mark. The first half was missed opportunities by Iowa and also sluggishness and penalties on Iowa. But they've come out here the second half and they've taken control of this football game. Seem to be executing much crisper right now than they did in the first half. Benton Solomon's put to the bottom of the screen. Thanks. Over 200 yards today passing. Third and seven. Oh. They run the jailbreak screen. Clark! Touchdown, Iowa! A great fake, and Kirk Ferentz's team goes up 19 to three. Mark, it's interesting. Iowa's pass defense has been beaten up statistically. Everybody knows that they're 116th in the country pass defense. The pass efficiency defense, which is important, Iowa's actually ahead of Wisconsin. Wisconsin is the team that's really struggled pass efficiency defense this year, and that's obvious right now. For the second time today, a wide open Iowa receiver makes it into the end zone, unencumbered. And it's 20 to 3 for the Iowa Hawkeyes. Brad Banks leading his down team down the field and into the end zone. We'll be right back. The Iowa Hawkeyes scoring on their first two drives here in the third quarter to lead 20 to 3 with 6.25 to go in the period. Look at the impressive scoring drive. Dallas Clark capping it off with a 23-yard touchdown grab. Nate Kading to kick off. And the Iowa Hawkeyes here in the second half have come out and really established some tempo. Williams two yards deep. Brought down at the 19-yard line, and boy, they really sold the fake, Bob, on that touchdown pass. Mark, this is a great design. Everybody knows the jailbreak play. I was setting up the jailbreak with Dallas Clark and Maurice Brown blocking out. C.J. Jones looks like he's going to catch the jailbreak. Wisconsin bites. Iowa runs the jailbreak and go. So Wisconsin anticipates the jailbreak. They bite on it. Iowa sells the jailbreak and then runs right by him for a touchdown. That is a great design play, particularly because Iowa had so much success last week on the jailbreak against Michigan. Threw that probably five or six times in the football game. Yeah, especially when they get down near the red zone there. You see how successful, meanwhile, Iowa is when Clark has three or more catchers. I think you did on the jailbreak as well, because yeah, I think I had jailbreak come out they of your mouth there early. Yep. I was had and took and bamboozled. First and ten, Sorge. Incomplete, intended for Darren Charles. Let's go back to Reese. What's up with the Aggies? Well, the Aggies are having a tough time corralling Tatum Bell. You know, Tatum Bell gave 182 to the black shirts, and now he's given three touchdowns to the wrecking crew. Oklahoma State running wild. 28-14, just about to go to the half in Stillwater. Battle of the Sunflower State, Kansas State, up on the Jayhawks by a count of 9-0. They're still early. All right, Reese, and back here, D.J. Johnson shaken up on that last play. He was clutching the back of his leg a little bit earlier. 
a few moments ago. Great coverage by D.J. Johnson, and you're going to see him right here reach for that hamstring. I think he has a hamstring pull right there on the deep throw. Right there, you see that left hand. He actually reaches back and clutches that hamstring. His backup is Javon Johnson, number 26. A true freshman in the football game. Well, so far, that secondary for the Iowa Hawkeyes has held up pretty well. Mark, interesting again, you see Iowa, no nickel package, no substituted defense. They keep their regular unit on the field. Sorge out to Williams, making it out to the 27. College football Saturday continuing today on ESPN. 3.30 Eastern, Illinois taking on number 21, Penn State, the Nittany Lions. Trying to keep things alive. Larry Johnson doing a great job running the ball. Meanwhile, number 22, Florida takes on number five, Jordan. The, the annual cocktail party. And this will be the first night game in that series since 1994. And uh, some Florida players adding a little verbal fuel to the fire. Mark, what's really different, you see Iowa with their linebackers in the game. No nickel substitution defense. So we're going to need to Davis. Davis tackled at the 30-yard line by Kevin Worthy. The reason that Iowa does that, they feel much more comfortable keeping their regular defense on the field, less substitution, and they're very patient. They sit back in that zone coverage. Once again, makes Wisconsin throw underneath. Of late, the Hawkeyes have not had any success against the Badgers. They've lost five consecutive times coming into this one. Hinkle back at the 24. Still on his feet. And brought down to the 34. A 10-yard return on the 46-yard punt. Well, the last time they defeated Wisconsin was in 96. Cedric Shaw is a highlight of the game, scoring on a 29-yard run in the first quarter. Matt Sherman hit Chris Kipper on a three-yard touchdown pass in the second quarter. And then Shaw finished the game with 143 rushing yards and three touchdowns, including an eight-yard run in the fourth quarter right there. Iowa beating Wisconsin 31-0. This has been a series characterized by a couple of streaks. Okay. First and ten for Banks. Had a hot hand here in the third quarter. Completes this one to his cousin, C.J. Jones. Time to give those guys a nickname. I'm going to call them Catfish and Grits because that's the pregame meal and it works for them. Iowa now throwing it will. You're going to see the safety in the corner play in quarters coverage. Iowa takes the receiver down. Deep outside route against the soft coverage. The tight end clears the safety out. That's stealing right there, Mark. But go back to Iowa's defense forcing three three and out so far in the second half against Wisconsin's, uh, 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 Wisconsin's offense. Banks going to take off on his own. What a move. Brad Banks stopped on a dime, didn't leave the Badgers any change, got a first down at the 30-yard line, first and 10. This football team is fun to watch. You just saw Brad Banks throw the football on a rope. Now you're going to see... Brad Banks come back and look like Anthony Davis or Fred Russell. Makes people miss in the open field as good as any running back we've seen all year, Mark. And should we start talking about that Heisman a little bit right we'll now? We'll stoke the fires on that a little bit. We saw his numbers comparing very favorably to some other Heisman candidates. Jones in motion. That's firing low, and it's ruled incomplete. Chucky Cowan's there to break it up. It was intended for Brown. Let's go back to Reese. All right, Mark, Alabama back in the state of Tennessee. Not quite as much fanfare or emotion taking on Vanderbilt. 11th place, 77-yard drive. Tyler Watts capping it off. And Grant's team on top by a count of 7-0 in the early going in Nashville. And Bowling Green, one of the eight undefeated teams, all into the end zone for the Falcons. And they're on top of Kent State, 7-0. All right, Reese, Brown, and Hinkle split to the top of your screen there on second down and 10 for the Hawkeyes. 
Cervantes, a rare carry for the fullback. Plowing his way, bludgeoning his way down to the 18-yard line. Hey, Bob, I guess you got to keep him happy, right? Well, what I was doing, they're going against the trend. Normally, when the fullback is in the game, it's either draw or it's pass. But they go ahead and throw him a bone. They give him a little piece of candy. They let Cervantes carry the football. And he said, you know what, with Fred Russell out, give me a chance to carry it a little bit. And we are now told, Bob, from the sidelines that Jamel Lewis is not at full speed. As Cervantes remains in the ballgame, there's Fred Russell in street clothes today. Banks on the slant for Brown, still on his feet. Mo Brown with Mo Yards. Close to the first down at the seven-yard line. Iowa is hot. Wisconsin is scrambling. They come with the all-out blitz, straight man-to-man -man coverage. They let him get inside on the post route. Simple throw right there for Brad Banks. You see Wisconsin right now is reeling on defense. Cannot get this passing game from Iowa stopped. Somebody said something in that Hawkeye locker room at halftime as Kevin Costco trying to get his defense aligned. Jamel Lewis now the deep back out of the eye along with Cervantes, the fullback. They run a little option into the boundary. Lewis run out of bounds back at the 11, hit by Lewis. Alex Lewis. Alex Lewis today, Mark. We have not mentioned his name much. We should have. He's played an outstanding football game. A young man, a junior college transfer from the state of New Jersey, an explosive football player. They are really high on this young man and his abilities. You know, when you look at the players that Wisconsin gets and the players that Iowa gets, a couple of coaches in the Ferentz and Alvarez that have rebuilt their programs respectively the right way. No question about that. And both those coaches from Pittsburgh grew up in Pittsburgh. Second down and goal, just like Bob Davey. The Bergs all over the place. Here's Lewis looking for a block and chopped down behind the line of scrimmage at the 11 by Alex Lewis once again. You had me nervous on that Pittsburgh thing. <laughs> I teed you up. I was waiting for you to come back with the, the uh, connection there in Pittsburgh. Uh, the Pittsburgh influence and, of course, the, the Jersey influence with the players that... Wisconsin gets for their program. Barry Alvarez, as I mentioned, with some great recruiting ties in the area. But Iowa dominating the yardage this period. 172 to 37. Mark third and 10. You think Dallas Clark a little bit here. Banks on the slant, knocked down at the line of scrimmage. It was intended for Brown, but Jason Jefferson Number 74 right there got one of those big paws up there to knock it down. Good stop right here for Wisconsin. The quick three-step drop. One thing normally, you want to chop those defensive linemen when the quarterback's that close to the line of scrimmage. There, Iowa does not chop the defensive line. Jason Jefferson's able to get up and bat that ball. Do we need to call this? <laughs> From 27 yards out, Caden. Oh, that might be the one that ends the streak, Nate Caden. And that is his first miss in his last 23 attempts. I'm speechless. It had to happen sometime. And it's interesting, if you watch what's happening now, there's fans that are applauding, even though he missed, an appreciative bit of applause by their fans. And actually, the execution of the snap and the hold were good. The rotation on the football is good. Wow. It looked like it went right over the crossbar. Maybe we have a better angle. Here's a better angle. It looks to me like it was outside the crossbar right there. There's Anthony Davis on first down and 10. Check that. That's Dwayne Smith in the ball game. Let's go to Reese in the studio. All right, Mark, and it is getting ugly in the big house. Michigan and Michigan State. John Navarre looking for the talented tight end, Benny Jopru. Man, are there some good tight ends in the Big Ten or what? Dallas Park, Jopru, touchdown there. Michigan's added another 35-3. Maryland's now rallied there on top of Carolina. What about Michigan State? A lot of turmoil there. Players pointing the fingers at each other. A lot of dissension in the locker room. Players defecting from the team. Being suspended indefinitely. Second down and seven. 
Sorge complete to Orr. And Orr is stopped up at the 31-yard line by Antoine Allen. Iowa's 5-0 in Big Ten Conference play, trying to stay unbeaten, trying to keep pace with Ohio State, who plays a big game today at home against Minnesota. Mark, Iowa exploding here in the second half. But when you look up at that scoreboard, it's only 20 to 3. You have the feeling, based on statistics, how the flow of this game has gone here in the second half, that Iowa is way ahead. But Wisconsin still has a shot right here if they can generate some offense. They're going to have to do it throwing the football, though. Dorgie hands it off to Smith. Right down at the 32. Time now for our Miller High Life storyline of the ball game. And there are several intriguing ones, one of them being Brad Banks. 16 to 26 passing, a couple of touchdown tosses, and Anthony Davis going over 1,000 yards for the season, needed 33 coming in. And the storyline to me, Iowa's defense, particularly overall against the run and also against the pass in this football game. Second down and eight. Flags down. You talked about the run defense by Iowa. If you listen closely enough. False start, offense. If you listen penalty, closely enough. It's still second down. If you listen closely enough to Wisconsin players and read between the lines and some of the things they were saying during the course of the week, you got the feeling that they were saying, hey, nobody's run the ball on Iowa the way we are going to, the way we want to run the ball. But so far, it hasn't been a successful formula for Barry Alvarez's team. That's the end of the third period of play. The Iowa Hawkeyes leading by 17 points with 17 unanswered points. We'll be right back. A panoramic view high above of Phoenix Stadium here in Iowa City. We get started for the fourth quarter here. Second down and 13 for Wisconsin. Sorge complete. Near midfield to Jonathan Orr, who goes high to make the catch, working on Antoine Allen. Take a look at our gateway game track. Iowa's pass offense has really caught fire here in the second half, Bob. Dallas Clark with a touchdown catch, and Kading finally missing a field goal. Just when we said we didn't have to call it. We Mark, did. You're right. Iowa's offense did catch fire throwing the football, but I'm impressed with Wisconsin's ability to throw the football as well with these young receivers. Sorge. Williams makes the catch and has the first down. Let's go to Holly Rowe. Guys, there's a lot on the line when Iowa and Wisconsin meet, most notably the manager bowl. <laughs> the managers play for this rusty toolbox. They've been doing it since 1991. Iowa won 33-12. to 12. Uh, What kind of offense did you run? Uh, it's eight on eight. We line up, snap the ball, and everyone goes out for a pass. Why is it so important? What do you keep in the box? Nothing but pride. Pride. Four straight years, the Iowa managers have dominated the Wisconsin Badger managers. Hey, hey. What's up with Wisconsin's <laughs> managers? Who's coaching that group? <laughs> <laughs> Need a coaching change. <laughs> Sorge almost intercepted. Antoine Allen almost had a pick. Intended for Orr on the play. Sorge goes up the top. An out and up move right here by Jonathan Orr. Ball thrown behind him. Little bit of contact right there, but the ball is underthrown. Sorge should have got that out in front of him. But Mark, let's go back to Wisconsin. The youth of this football team, they've had 32 touchdowns this year, 17 of those touchdowns by a freshman. So they're young, and they're going through, th through some growing pains right now, but they have some young talent on this team. Yeah, when you have freshmen, you're gonna suffer some inconsistencies. This is Dwayne Smith, another freshman. Brought down just shy of the 35-yard line by Grant Steen. Wisconsin Bob started off 5-0 this season, then lost three games in a row. Two of them were very tough losses. They were competitive losses against Penn State and Ohio State. The one disappointing loss in their eyes was the Indiana one. Mark down at Indiana. One thing people would never think of or really care about, that was their week of midterm exams that's a difficult week for any college football team but they gave away squandered the lead down in bloomington 
Third down and six. Sorge incomplete on the flag on the play. Darren Charles, the intended receiver, Antoine Allen. Got there perhaps a little bit too early. Let's go to Reese in the studio. All right, Mark, throughout the first half, Auburn's bottled up Ole Miss, but you know Eli's coming. 14-3 game in the third quarter, and Eli Manning finds Chris Collins and the Rebels and beating it home this season back in the game. It's 14-10 in the third quarter. Rutgers continues to lead Miami by three. Don't forget that game is being webcast on ESPN.com. It'll help with a broadband connection. And by the way, Notre Dame is taking the field, guys. They're in the green jerseys today. Oh, always something special brewing with the Irish. First down and ten. Sorge under pressure and sat back at the 29-yard line. That Iowa defense leading the Big Ten in sacks. Jonathan Babino and Colin Cole leading the way. Cole out of Fort Lauderdale, Florida. A leader by example on that defensive front. And now Sorge is down in the field. So with Bollinger already out, Sorge down. The plot thickens for the Badgers. Owen Daniels is the third string quarterback, a 6'3, 211 pound sophomore out of Naperville, Illinois. Bollinger was roughed up towards the last half of the first half of play. Took a hard hit from Derek Pagel to the head. And then Sorge came in from that point and has been the quarterback since then. Sorge down in the field. We'll take a short break and come right back. The picture on your screen, a coach's worst nightmare. Brooks Bollinger on the right, injured in the second quarter. On the left, Jim Sorge injured just a few moments ago. Owen Daniels, the third string quarterback in the ballgame, back to pass for Wisconsin. And he's sacked back at the 35 by Jonathan Babineau. Let's take one more look at what happened to Sorge a few moments ago. Mark, not a real vicious hit or anything right here. I think actually right there, Babino falls on his wrist, and he injured his right wrist. But getting back as we see Sorge coming back in the football game, that's four sacks now for Iowa on the day. 32 for the season, majority with a four-man rush. Give credit to Iowa's front four for the kind of pressure they generate. They've really improved in their twists and stunts in the last few weeks. That's what they were telling us yesterday. Sorge. Incomplete. Great effort by Brandon Williams, who laid out but couldn't make the catch. Tremendous effort by Brandon Williams, and Wisconsin completed this play earlier in the first half on the throwback. He lays out. Could have been a tremendous catch right there. Looks like Wisconsin, no other choice but to go for it here on fourth down and 17. Those are the ball just inside the 35-yard line. They're two of seven on fourth downs this year. They've got to get to the 28 of Iowa. Sorky to pass into the end zone. And it's intercepted by Javon Johnson. Took a while to sort it out. But number 26, Johnson, emerges from the pile with the ball. And that's his third pick of the season. Really not a bad decision right there by Sorge to go ahead and launch the ball into the end zone. Wisconsin here, excellent protection. Buys time. You just throw the jump ball situation. Great vertical leap right there by Jovan Johnson, the young freshman, going up and getting that football. I mean, he is up in the air, out wrestles or, and it's Iowa's ball at the 20-yard line. Got some hops, doesn't he? He does. First turnover today of the ball game. And the Iowa Hawkeyes just bubbling, burgeoning with confidence right now offensively and defensively and a lot of the credit going to number seven brad banks folks voters heisman voters 
keep number seven in mind. Just check out his dossier. We'll be right back. Folks, the last time Iowa finished the Big Ten schedule unbeaten was 1922. The 21-22 season, I'm told by Steve LeBeau, our stat man, that Harding was the president back then. I have to check that one out. First and ten for Iowa. Hand it off to Ocho Dr Dramel Lewis. Let's go back to Reese in the studio. Reese? Rutgers and Miami again, guys. Rutgers up three, going for the field goal to make it six. Sean Carty's your hold. Fake! Executed beautifully, but didn't turn loose of the football, and Keanu reminded him, throw it up, son, at the end. Miami snuffs it, but Rutgers continues to lead by three. And, you know, the second longest winning streak in the land, Bowling Green, they're locked up at seven with Penn State. Second down and four for the Hawkeyes. All right, Reese. Thanks to pass. Clark. Still on his feet. Got a great block on the edge. First down, Hawkeyes at the 47-yard line. Dallas Clark telling Jensen, hey, you got my back, and I love you for it. What a block. Again, Dallas Clark. One-on-one -on, -one on Ryan Aiello, the safety. He makes Aiello miss, and then he is going to get a tremendous block by Eric Jensen downfield. Dallas Clark once again, Mark, on the safety. That's stealing with the tight end, the caliber of Dallas Clark. The guy that can really run first down and 10. Banks has established a career-high passing. Here he goes on the out and up for Jones. Incomplete. It was broken up by Tucker. I was mentioning that career high set today by Brad Banks. 275 yards passing, including a couple of touchdown tosses. Uh, what do you think of my nickname for Banks and his cousin C.J. Jones? Catfish and grits, huh? Does it work for you? I think that's pretty good. That's kind of catchy. That's, that's really catchy, particularly here in Iowa. <laughs> but you think about Brad Banks, number one in the Big Ten pass efficiency, completing 60% of his passes. Third leading receiver on the team. Second down and 10. Cervantes, his second carry of the ball game, cross midfield to the 49-yard line. Mark, we mentioned Dallas Clark had a great block downfield. You're going to see it right here. Eric Jensen comes in and just lowers the boom right there. And you don't like to be in that position right there if you're a football player, Mark. You mean with your cleats up in the air? Wow. That's a block. Great block by Jensen on Scott Starks right there. Third down and five for the Hawkeye offense. Iowa with 17 unanswered points since the game was tied at three apiece. Banks got rid of it, incomplete for Cervantes. Some backside pressure coming from Jonathan Welsh. Iowa setting up the screen to the fullback. Brad Banks again showing uncanny ability to miss, to make people miss, gets rid of the football field position game. Instead of a 10-yard loss, Iowa gets to punt the football from across the 50-yard line. There's Bradley now trying to nail this one inside the 20. It's his fifth punt of the day. Bearcats called to the 12. Well, College Football Saturday continues today on ESPN. 3.30 Eastern, Illinois travels to Happy Valley to take on number 21 Penn State and Larry Johnson. Then in prime time, folks, down to Jacksonville for the annual cocktail party between number five Georgia and number 22 Florida. This will be the first night game of the series since 94. And Bob, interesting perspective on coaching. Last year, Illinois, Big Ten champs, Ron Turner, best coach on the planet. Funny how perception of him could change a little bit with their lack of success this year. If you have success, <laughs> you better enjoy it because it turns quickly. First and 10 for Wisconsin now. Sorge completes it to the freshman, Brandon White. Let's go to Reese. 21 straight games in the ACC. Duke has fallen with a seven-point lead against Clemson. The Devils 
perhaps putting the goalpost at Wallace Wade Stadium in jeopardy. Adam Smith to Kari Sharp for the touchdown, and the Tigers are down by 14 as the Devils try to get their first ACC win, and Maryland has NC State next week. The Terps laying it on Carolina deep in the first half. Hey, what about Duke and Rutgers today? Amazing. What are they eating? Pick the book 19 to Jonathan Orr on that last play. Orr falls down at the 40. It's incomplete. Iowa's pass defense much maligned earlier in the season and even up to a few weeks ago, but the bottom line are the wins and Norm Parker, the defensive coordinator, doing an outstanding job scheming. And I don't like this, Mark, because college pass defense, they just go total yards. That's not the most important thing. The most important thing is pass efficiency defense. Because if someone throws the football on you a lot, and you're ahead in the game, they're going to have a lot of yards. I was 50th, though, in the country in pass efficiency, which is really pretty decent. And their defensive front is very decent, too. Comes up with an ear sack. And let's go downstairs to Holly for more on the D. Guys, Norm Parker, the defensive coordinator for Iowa, has a wonderful scheme for getting his players ready for the game. He makes everybody on his defense prepare a scouting report that they have to present the night before the game. The catch is, nobody knows who's going to be called on in the meeting, so everybody has to have the report ready to get up and present to their peers. They say it gives them confidence in the game to play fast because they're 100% prepared. Well, Parker keeping his guys thinking at all times. Third down and nine. That front four licking their chops right here, Mark, and they come with the twist. Huh? Sorge. Incomplete, Orr and Williams were both in the neighborhood, and Sorge ends up on his stomach. Colin Cole got him after he released him. Iowa runs a lot of twist stunts. Here you're going to see Colin Cole outside, the end underneath. Colin Cole is going to just keep working, keep working, keep working, and he's going to get great pressure right here on Sorge. A lot of Norm Parker's philosophies go back to George Perlis and his time he spent at Michigan State. Forced to punt. Almost blocked. Hagel got there and almost seemingly overran the ball. Javon Johnson was the one that got there, actually. A 27-yard punt. And Iowa will start off on their own 40. Don't forget more college football on ESPN2 at 4 o'clock Eastern, number 20, Florida State against Wake Forest. Then Pitt taking on number three, Virginia Tech, with their outstanding running game. That's later on ESPN2. Kevin Jones and Suggs, perhaps the most talented backfield in the country. That'll be a good game to watch. First down and 10 for Iowa, backs out of the eye. Just under nine minutes to play, the Hawkeyes trying to stay unbeaten in Big Ten play. Lewis staying on his feet. Out to the 20, pardon me, the 45. Let's go to Reese. Miami desperately trying to get some offense going. They're late in the third quarter, down three to Rutgers, third and seven. Ken Dorsey under big heat, finds Kellen Winslow, and he is snuffed out and knocked down by Jarvis Johnson, a secondary playing great for the Scarlet Knights. They continue to lead by three. They're in the fourth quarter at K-State, whooping on Kansas. Second down and five, Reese back here. Lewis stopped up at the 45. Let's take one more look at Iowa's special teams on that last punt that was almost blocked. In man-to-man -man punt protection, you do not account for the corner who should be out holding up the gunner. Here, Iowa brings Jovan Johnson. Wisconsin doesn't account uh, for him, and how did he miss blocking that punt, Mark? He actually got there too soon. He got beyond the football. But in man-to-man -man punt protection, you take for granted that the corner's going to be out, covering down on the gunner. That time Iowa blocked the corner and should have blocked that punt. Third and five for Banks. Incomplete. Brown came out of his cut somewhere different from where Banks thought he'd be. You can see right here, Jovan Johnson coming again. Slow down. There's the ball over there. So Jovan Johnson, a young freshman, gets a little too excited. Would have had a block punt right there. Bradley into punt. 
And football 101 on ESPN.com, Bob Davies' weekly column, he says in the net punting category, you want to average about 37.5 yards. That won't do it right there. You didn't think I was reading. You didn't think I was listening, huh? You amaze me every week. 37-yard <laughs> punt. We'll be right back. ESPN's presentation of college football brought to you by TGI Fridays. At Fridays, try one of our delicious menu items tonight, like our double-glazed baby back ribs or lemon chicken scallopini. Welcome back, everyone, to Kinnick Stadium here in Iowa City, Iowa. Iowa leading Wisconsin 20-3. I'm Mark Jones along with Holly Rowe and Bob Davey. First down and 10 for Wisconsin. Ball thrown, 28-yard line. Brooks Bollinger is not in the ball game. He was knocked out, and now Sorge is not in the ball game. It's Owen Daniels, incomplete. Let's go downstairs to Holly Rowe. Guys, Coach Daryl Wilson now with the Iowa Hawkeyes on special teams. Last year was with Wisconsin on special teams. He was released, found a new job here, and he says he loves it. The kids have accepted him. But he did get an email this week from his former player, Lee Evans. He said, Coach, we miss you. Good luck in the game. I don't think he wished him this much luck, though. Mark, you talk about special teams and the job Daryl has done. Wisconsin, 11 of their 12 possessions have started inside their own 30-yard line. We talked about the statistic of field position, tremendous correlation with special teams. That says it all. 11 of 12 drives inside your 30. Here's Daniels, meanwhile. Right down at the 33-yard line by Jonathan Babineau. A lot of people talked about the Big Ten and where they'd stand with respect to other conferences, but some teams doing some great things, especially Iowa first in several categories on special teams. Mark, and also scoring with special teams. Kickoff return for a touchdown. Blocked field goal for a touchdown. Blocked punt for a touchdown. Blocked extra point for a two-point conversion. Third down and six for the Badgers. Looking for a huge play. But where is it going to come from? Perhaps Jonathan Orr, who makes the catch at the 39 right near the first down and he has the first down for wisconsin he was working on javon johnson you know it's interesting how a lot of people think about wisconsin as a running school but their last two offensive mvps were both receivers chris chambers now with the miami dolphins and lee evans last year who piled up huge numbers bob no question and losing lee evans what a sad story. Here's yeah. a young man who decides to come back. Could have come out, obviously, as a first-round draft pick. That's a big chunk of Wisconsin's offense. But more particularly, the disappointment for Lee Evans with that kind of devastating injury. Pass incomplete through the arms of Orr from Daniels. Once again, redshirt freshman receiver. A tremendous amount of upside and ability. But Mark, this football, even though it's thrown a little bit behind or should have been caught, but he is a freshman receiver. Looking at Owen Daniels, the young quarterback from Wisconsin, you can see that he's a little bit slow releasing that football, Mark, and he has a tendency to really look where he's throwing it. So I wouldn't be surprised to see Iowa jump on one of these routes here. Second and 10, he's under pressure. Rushed out, he can run pretty well, apparently. Out to the 47-yard line where he's finally brought down. He's a former high school All-American. Tackled by Matt Roth on the pressure. Kind of out of the same mold as Bollinger and Brad Banks. Owen Daniels elusive in the open field. He makes Worthy miss in the open field. And then once again, if your quarterback's going to run, he's going to take a lick. You can see right there Antoine Allen wrestles him to the ground. Part of the job description, third down and three. Matters has got to get to the 49 for the first down. There's Sorge. Wisconsin there's right two hand. down territory right here. I uh, wouldn't be surprised to see the decide play right here. There it is, and he keeps it himself. Daniels has the first down and then some. Nice run down to the 42-yard line of the Iowa Hawkeyes. Pago making the stop. Once again, we talk about the decide. If the defensive end closes, 
as he does here, the quarterback will keep the football off the zone fake. So Owen Daniels, a good job. The defensive end gets inside. Owen Daniels keeps the football. Plays who Clemson run a lot, correct? Clemson, and actually Rich Rodriguez, who's now the head coach at West Virginia, was one of the first Northwestern brought that play to the Big Ten, though, several years ago. And Wisconsin calls a timeout. They've got two remaining, as do the Iowa Hawkeyes, marching towards perhaps an undefeated season in conference play. We'll be back. We're here in Iowa City, Iowa, Kinnick Stadium. I'm Mark Jones, along with Bob Davey and Holly Rowe. Iowa leading Wisconsin by a score of 20 to 3. The Hawkeyes trying to improve to 9 and 1 overall, 6 and 0 in conference play. Don't forget, coming up after the game, College Game Day scoreboard presented by Acura. Huge stories today in college football, including Rutgers, who at last look was leading Miami. This one picked off. Pagel. And Derek Pagel steps out of bounds at the 30-yard line. You can say what you want statistically about Iowa's pass defense, but in reality, it's a different story. They are staunch, they are stout, they are stubborn, and they can stop you. Mark, bad decision right here by Owen Daniels, particularly because it's first and 10. Simple post route to Orr. He's double covered by the safety. Pagel, the free safety, comes in, and then Pagel comes back and makes a return. But poor decision right there to throw that football down the field. If it was fourth down, take a shot. But on first down, Mark, just throw the football away and live to have three more downs. That's Pagel's fourth interception this season. Banks hands it off to Jamel Lewis. Lewis brought down, and Reese, what's up with the Hurricanes and Rutgers? Or you mentioned it last look, Rutgers had the lead, and the Scarlet Knights were clinging to that. 17-14 early in the fourth quarter. The Canes inside. 20-yard line, Ken Dorsey, a dart to Andre Johnson. Dorsey hasn't been terribly accurate, but he was with that one. And the Canes are back on top, 21-17. All right, Reese, looks like uh, my Sunday morning Miami Herald might actually make it tomorrow morning. If that score holds up, second down and three for Brad Banks in the Hawkeyes offense. Two tight end formation. Lewis doing a pretty good job filling in for Fred Russell, who did not play today because of a hand injury. He was brought down by Aiello on the play. But if you're just joining us, the day started with news that Fred Russell, the team's leading rusher, would not play because of an injury to his right hand. In came Jermel Lewis, who last week ran for over 109 yards against Michigan in their big win on the road. He got the start today. There's Russell watching from the sidelines. Today, Lewis, 20 runs for a total of 21 for 69. First down and 10. Lewis out to the 47. As for the quarterback, Brad Banks, you have to start including him when you talk about the Heisman Trophy Award. Two touchdown passes, one of them to Brown on a broken coverage late in the first half, and then Dallas Clark. Mark, and so many hidden things that don't show up on these highlights and these stats. Think of all the times we've seen Iowa, how many negative plays Brad Banks has gotten the Iowa offense out of by creating plays but not panicking and turning the football over. I think his decision-making ability and his coolness under pressure are two of the things that makes him special. There's Lewis trying to get to the edge, and he's brought down at the 47, especially Bob Banks does it on third downs. He really does, and uh, now, now you see now Kinnick. <laughs> yeah, you know, he won the Heisman in 1939, the only Hawkeye ever to win the trophy. He also won the Walter Camp Award that year, the Maxwell Award, Big Ten MVP honors. He was a consensus All-American. You wore that same kind of suit. Your suit comes up real high like that with all those buttons. Did you notice that? I'm a classic kind of guy, just like Kinnick was. You know, I'll tell you, man, I pale by comparison <laughs> when I stand next to you with these conservative clothes. I don't get the I same wear. kind of love that, that you get in Iowa City, though. Right? <laughs> they call out your name all over the streets of Iowa City. Third like, down is five. People like you when you're an assistant coach. They like you when you have been a head coach. It's just while you're the head coach, they don't like you. 
Jamel Lewis down to the 45-yard line of the Badgers with 1.49 to go. Well, we're certainly no strangers to the people here of Iowa. Our third time we've been to Kinnick Stadium, and the fans really starting to jump onto the bandwagon. Mark, they should jump on that band bandwagon. This is a well-balanced football team, and you see them 6-0, 9-1. Remarkable job by Kirk Ferentz and this Iowa staff. Next week at home against Northwestern, then they finish up at, at Minnesota. The, uh, Jamel Lewis stopped up at the 45. Mark, total domination in this football game today by Iowa. And this is a game where the final score is not indicative as just how much Iowa's controlled this game, particularly in the second half. And you see Marcus Schnorr, the fourth tailback at the start of this season in the game. And he's going to get a chance, hopefully, right here. Oh, they're going to the Big Ben taking me. I thought Mike, Marcus Schnorr might get a... Uh, Carry. Well, over 70,000 people, most of them staying right until the end here, gathering today at Kinnick Stadium on a sunny, brisk, and cool late November afternoon to watch their hometown team, the Hawkeyes, move one step closer to perhaps a perfect, unblemished record in conference play. As and were it not for two for, uh, third quarter fumbles by Brad Banks, they might be undefeated. Mark, they're as hot as any football team in this country. They're as balanced as any football team in the country. And with that kicking game, I think they can beat any football team on the, in the country. They're a legitimate top five team. Well, their goals continue to grow week to week, day to day. We showed you on one of our earlier broadcasts, they've got a sign inside their weight room that says, the road to Pasadena goes through these doors, and they believe it to a man. The final score once again, 20 to 3 for the Hawkeyes, who improved to 9 and 1 on the season, 6 and 0 in conference play. Coming up next, it's the College Game Day scoreboard presented by Acura, followed by Illinois at number 21, Penn State. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For Holly Rowe and Bob Davey, I'm Mark Jones saying so long for Maya right now. Let's go back to Reese in the studio. So Iowa, a 20-3 winner. The Hawkeyes remain unbeaten in Big Ten play. Glad to have you with us on the College Game Day scoreboard. Presented by Acura and Trev, after the emotional win that Iowa had last week against Michigan, came in against an inspired Wisconsin team that played very tough, yep. very hard defense in the first half and came away with a solid win. I agree with Bob Davey. I don't know if they're in the top five, but I'll tell you this. Iowa's definitely playing like a team that deserves to be in the top five. There's a little discrepancy in terms of how you rate them there. But the bottom line is we know about the offense. I think offensively, Iowa struggled a little bit. Wisconsin's defense played well, but Iowa's defense is now forget about the statistics. It doesn't matter. They have a good defense. They're the best team in the Big Ten. Bottom line. Bob Davey made an excellent point during that first half and the second half of the game about how the statistics can be misleading. Yep. Certainly the only stat Kirk Ferentz cares about right now is the fact he's still undefeated in the Big yep. Ten. He's standing by with our Holly Rowe. <laughs> Kirk, obviously it's too early to talk about the Rose Bowl, but your performance by Brad Banks and your defense bowl like aspirations. Well, I'll tell you, Holly, we, we knew it was going to be a very hard-fought game. We have so much respect for Wisconsin, what they've done over the last 10 years, and it was just great, a great team effort. Brad played well. Our defense is really starting to come on now, and that's something we knew was going to be important for us. We saw this last week against Michigan, again today against Wisconsin, really having to plug along in the first half, but then you open up the playbook in the second half, and your receiving game has really come alive. Well, you know, we're in conference play now, and every game's going to be tough. We know that coming in. Uh, you know, and when, when we had to, our guys made some plays. I thought our coaching staff did a great job at halftime with some adjustments. All right, I know a lot of our announcers are jumping on the bat. Thanks for Heisman bandwagon. What do you think? Well, yeah, I love Brad at Iowa. I know that. I, anything else that happens is great, and that's how we feel about all our players. But I'll tell you, he's all Iowa. I know that. All right, two games ahead on the schedule. How do you keep your team focused and settle down? It's the same thing we've been doing each and every week. Uh, you know, we have Northwestern coming in here next week. I got a feeling it's going to be a pretty good environment here in Kinnick, like it always is. Yeah, we'll, handle, we'll try to do our best against them, and then we'll worry about the next one after that. All right, you say the hay's not in the barn. This week you said eight is not enough. What's going to be enough, Coach? Well, now it's nine. 
All right, that's, that's pretty easy. We're just going one time at a, one game at a time. Thank you very much. Thanks. Reese Davis, back to you in the studio. Holly, thank you very much. And, you know, they're excited, and as well they should be. What do you think about Brad Banks for the Heisman? Top five in terms of my Heisman, Brad Banks is obviously in my top five. Brad Banks is unbelievable, great quarterback, and I'm not so sure right now he's not the best quarterback in the state of Iowa, and that means Seneca Wallace. Brad Banks is unbelievable. The improvement he's made all season has been great. And, you know, I think you can say that, and it's not a shot at Seneca Wallace no, at all. No, I mean, no. Wallace has been outstanding, but Banks has really raised his game over the last month or so.